Okay, very excited about this project. Um, this is right in my wheelhouse. It's gonna be just a, I'm gonna say small, but it's gonna be about 40 inch cabinet, uh, about okay. 34 inches high and maybe 15 inches wide. It could be anything. You could take this from the basic idea and make a bookcase out of it, whatever. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 But what uh, Princess here wants is a little dry bar because she likes to have some of the holy wine. So yeah. we're gonna make some glass storage on the upper side and then in the bottom there'll be plenty of room for some bottles of wine. Bottles of wine. Okay. In case we get snowed in this winter or the COVID hits again. All right, right. Um, we got our grubby little hands on some beautiful oak. It's not rough sawn by any means, but it's also not completely finished. It's almost a full inch thick. Oh, it smells good too. And the width varies a little bit, but it's a little under three inches. So <clears throat> the first thing that I'm going to do is run it through the joiner on one edge to get one good straight edge. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna rip all the pieces that we're gonna use for this to two and a half inches, a little more than two and a half and then we will join the other side so we have two finished edges. And then we will figure out if we'll run it through the planer, which Kathy probably will I want to do. I think I'll do that, yeah. Because she loves to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's I mean, pretty. a little sanding and it would be good to go. But it also is, it's very thick, it's almost an inch. So, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fun. Oh, and fun fact, uh, rumor has it that this is from one of the original three oak trees <laughs> that our town was founded on. Hmm. Could be fiction. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I found this on Craigslist, so <laughs> must be true. <laughs> must be true. Let's get to work. All right, let's go. Okay, so I have run this side through the joiner, and then I ripped this to a little over two and a half inches. You can see that this side is very rough from the sock, so I'm going to run this through the joiner, and we'll have two beautiful, finished, totally straight edges. I did decide to run these through the planer. They are a little scruffy and there's certainly some variance in the thickness, so it's just the right thing to do. Uh, you probably notice that Kathy's not out here and you probably know that this is her favorite tool, but when you snooze, you lose. Hope you're having a nice wine time with your sister-in-law, Kathy. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take these boards and run them through the planer. And then at some point, like I'm just going to decide which side is going to be the face. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of ugly. That side's oh, real pretty. pretty. Mm -hmm. Let's go over the parts of our cabinet. Rails run horizontally, like fence rails. The bottom rail of the bar is raised off the floor a couple of inches. Styles run vertically and in this project go from the top all the way to the floor. We'll join the rails and styles together using pocket hole screws and glue. This will be called the face frame. We will stop the groove where the bottom rail ends so it's not visible in the exposed part of the styles. These will be joined with tongue and groove joints, which will create a groove for the panels to sit in. The sides will also be made with rails and styles. The front style will be more narrow to account for the thickness of the face frame. We've got all the pieces planed, so they're all the same thickness, and now I'm going to cut them all to length using my miter saw with a stop block set up here. So all I have to do is run them through. Normally, I like to cut the pocket holes, but I was a little busy, so Kevin did it. I'm going to use these Z-clips to attach the top to the carcass. What I do is cut a, a saw kerf about a half an inch from the top. That allows this Z-clip to fit in there, and then there's a screw hole that I will drill in and screw to the top, and that allows the top to expand and contract with humidity conditions as time goes by, and it, it should never crack. Now I can go ahead and assemble the face frame with pocket screws and glue. At the bottom, I'm going to keep it up off of the floor two and a half inches, which is what the face frame rails and styles are. So I'm just, I've got a block 
left over from some of the cutoffs and I'm going to use that as my measuring device and then just go ahead and screw it together as usual. And on the top rail, I just want to make sure that I have my piece with the saw kerf a half inch from the top. So I'll orient it the right way, glue it, and screw it together. Kevin is using his router table with a tongue cutting bit to cut the rails for the side panels and the doors. Next, he'll switch to the groove cutting bit and run all the rails and styles through it. That completes all the milling for the side panels and cabinet doors. Okay, here I've got all of the rails and styles cut and milled for the door. I've got the grooves cut in them and the mortises on the ends. I've also got the face frame and what I'm going to do is mount the face frame and a door style into my into my bench clamp and then I'm going to use my mortising router jig and a straight cutting router bit and cut the mortises at the same time for my two inch butt hinges into the face frame and the door style. The reason for this is it's just a lot easier than doing it after everything's all assembled because I can do it right on the bench and when things are easier it's usually more accurate also. So that's why we do it now. My homemade mortising jig is very simple. It's just a block of wood with two blocks of wood screwed to it, set apart at the distance which, when subtracting the size of my faceplate to the router bit, will allow me to mortise out two inches in the middle of this jig. So all I have to do with these pieces clamped together and oriented in such a way that when this closes, the door will be you know where the door is going to be is I just put this on the workpiece all the way up against this style and this is where the mortise is going to be and I just take a couple clamps and clamp it together so that doesn't work its way out anyway one clamp is going to do it and then And there we go, the mortise will sit right into that little groove. At this point, it's also a really good idea to make a mark on the inside mortise of these so that you know where they go. So I'm just gonna put an A on both of these, which will be the top. And then on the other side, I'll, I'll probably put a B. Or maybe a seven, or a star, maybe a smiley face. Next, I'm going to rip the quarter inch plywood for the panels on the ends and also the door panels. So I did some mathematics to figure out the most efficient way to get um, the use out of this sheet of plywood. Got the table saw set up, got an outfeed table ready to go. It's always a little chore to wrestle this baby around, but we can do it. Okay, so I've ripped this to the width of the door panels, and then the width of the side panels is a little narrower than that, so we'll have a little bit of waste here. That's okay. Um, and then to make my first cross cut, I have marked the length of both door panels, plus a little extra to allow for saw kerf, and the balance of this will give me enough material to use for the side panels. So I, I put my masking tape on here to reduce the tear out. I've made my mark on both ends and then a long time ago I made this little template which will give me the width of my the fence on my circular saw to the blade. So what I do is hold this up to the line that I actually marked and then use my straight edge 
which will kind of become a fence for my saw to ride up against. And we'll clamp that right down to the plywood. And then we can make our cut, you know, once I plug this in. Now I have manageable pieces that I can use the table saw to make the final cross cuts. Before I glue these pieces together, I just like to lay it all out on the bench and make sure that the doors all fit and the gaps are nice and there's nothing that I could do before I assemble this. And they all look pretty good. One last thing we can do before we glue up the doors and panels is to go ahead and hit the quarter inch plywood with some very light sandpaper. This is 220. Okay, got everything lined up here for a little glue up. Still trying to use up my old glue so I can get back to my cool new glue bottle. This is going to be a little redundant and repetitive, so we're going to go into warp speed. Okay, it's time to glue this baby together. Time to glue this up. Guess what I just figured out? There's a cap here to put that on so it's not in my way. Duh. Now that Kevin has learned how to use his fancy new glue bottle, he's gluing up the pieces for the top, complete with biscuits, of course. And here is the clamp o -rama glue up of our top. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I kind of pieced in some small pieces there just because I'm a hoarder with my oak. And I hope that it's gonna look pretty cool, kind of like a floor almost, but we'll see. Looking good so far. The top is cured overnight, and now it's time to cut it to its finished length. Neither end is square just because I glued it up and it's a little, little bit uh, off here. I knew that going into it, so I've made a mark where I want to cut it. I've put my tape on so I don't get tear out, and I'm just going to use a framing square to get a nice straight line here. I'll double check the accuracy of that on the other side, nice and square. Now using my template that I made for my circular saw, I'll lay that on the line, clamp this down. And then I'm gonna do one additional thing here and that is put a sacrificial piece of wood on the back side so I don't get tear out as the saw blade comes through here. I'll just clamp that on but I don't want it to stand proud and interfere with my fence. Okay. Now I can just very carefully make this last cut. Now when I take the tape off, I should have a nice clean edge. See how the, the tape really took the brunt of the tear out there? So if I, if I do have any little bit of tear out, it'll come off in the final sanding. Just a little bit, not worried about that at all. When sanding a glued up top, first of all, I'm not around. <laughs> Second of all, Kevin starts with a belt sander and it's very important to keep the sander moving so you don't gouge the top. Now he switches to an orbital sander with sandpaper from 80 to 240 grit. I'm going to use these little magnetic catches to close the doors. There'll be one for each door on the top and bottom. Right now is a great time for me to go ahead and attach this little 
block that those will mount to before I have the top on and the back on. I can just reach in here a little better. So I've made a center mark along the top rail and a center mark on this block. And I'm just going to attach this with a couple of pocket screws and some wood glue. Okay, I'm going to affix the carcass to the top. The top is upside down on my workbench. And like I said, I'm using these Z clips for the first time. I'm gonna slide it into the saw turf that we made. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's centered within one of the planks rather than in a glue seam. And then these screws appear to be self-tapping. So I will drive it home. Okay, that was pretty easy. The idea of that is it allows the top to contract and expand over time. Before I put the back on, I want to make some sort of rails that we can hang wine glasses from. So I've just cut down some one by four that I had laying around that is the right height. I think that this will slide into. And then <clears throat> I had some, uh, it's probably about half inch oak from a previous project. And I'm going to screw that this way. And then I've done some mathematics and made some spacers. So if I space these along this way and then screw those in, these glasses will slide in there and hang like this. There's the space is such that they, they couldn't really fall out of there. Also, I'm impressed enough with those Z-clips that that is the way I'm going to attach these to the top. So I've sanded all of these pieces that the um, glasses will sort of dangle from. Just to make installation a little easier, I cut a strip here that is going to act as sort of a guide fence. And that will be the center point and then I can just add a little wood glue and drive three screws in. I've already drilled those on the drill press. To hold this in place, I'm just gonna use a couple of these big old paper clip thingies. What do you think? I think it is beautiful. It's coming together nice. It's the most beautiful thing I've seen. Well, maybe you don't have a mirror. <laughs> this is the kind of piece that I hope when I make something that's really nice like this, that when we're gone, one of our, our kids fight over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or at least pass it on to somebody that would appreciate it. The nice thing is we're making it as wine bar Kathy, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be a TV stand or um, you can convert it into a bookshelf pretty easily. Yeah. Bookcase, I mean. Has some spots here for wine glasses though. That's, that's a plus. Sister Mary Catherine just has a little bit of a one-track mind, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put on the back now. Remember, we cut a dado in each of the side panels to receive the back. And instead of plywood, we got this really nifty beadboard. That's pretty. Really nifty beadboard. And you could use it on either side. You can use the beaded board, or you could use the flat that side. Part. And I'm kind of leaning towards the flat side, but what do you think, Kathy? I think the flat side. Yeah. And what makes that even nicer, because I, I made an overhang on the back of the top, so there's an inch and a half on all four sides of the top. <clears throat> if this were to ever be like, say, a, a bar or on the end of a couch or something, oh, the oh. back could show and it would be Fine. pretty, right. yeah, pretty on all four sides. So I've um, ripped the first piece. I laid these out to make sure that I'm not gonna be at an awkward stopping point. And um, that way we have a flat edge that will go into our rabbit up against the side panel. And we're just going to lay them out. And I think I am gonna use a little bit of glue, just a little bit of glue on these and tack it in with a brad nailer. All right, sounds like a plan. So we got these bead boards at a um, like an outlet store that has seconds and whatnot. And like on this stretch, I'm sure that this is why it wasn't sold for top dollar. I personally like this. Mm -hmm. 
You know, there were a couple spots that were too bad that I didn't use, I cut out or whatever, but this right here doesn't bother me at all, so. Gives I, a character. I like the character of it, yeah. So this project is coming along very nicely. It's beautiful. We're going to make it a two-part episode. We're going to do the next episode strictly on the finishing of this product. And one of the reasons for that is I ordered some very cool black two-inch butt hinges. <laughs> and apparently they're on the metric system because they were nowhere near two they're inch. They're tiny. They're yeah. baby butt hinges. Like for a dollhouse <laughs> or something. Um, but this, this is a very nice looking project, I think. Yeah, and it's beautiful. I can't wait to use it. We'll pretend that the hinges were on and I opened that and then you could see the wine rack part of this. Uh-huh. Yep. Wine glass is right there. So there's a lot to talk about in terms of finishing this. At this point it's sanded. I've got a little light sanding to do and a little filling to do and then we'll put on whatever stain color Kathy chooses mm -hmm. and then we're going to finish it with a um, shellac, I believe. We're going to use an amber shellac for the first coat and then clear shellac for the next coat or two. And it's going to shine, shine. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Um, what, what else? Is, what is shellac made of, Kevin? Oh, shellac is an all natural product that's made from bug spit. The shellac bug, I bug guess. Spit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, hey, remember about the t shirt. Mm -hmm. If you want to win one chance. of our super cool t shirts, I'm wearing one here. Um, it's Superman. We're going to give one away. We're going to draw the name on Thanksgiving. All you have to do is leave us a nice comment on this video or the last video. Actually, any of our videos. Yeah. Um, but it has to be done before Thanksgiving. Make sure you subscribe. And make sure you hit the like button on our videos. It mm -hmm. helps us with our mojo and also the YouTube algorithm. So we would appreciate that very much. Very much, yeah. Um, but in your comment, you absolutely have to tell us what size, large or extra large. That's the only two sizes we have. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be entered into the uh, drawing if we if don't know we, what yeah, size. Right. So We can't guess. We can't guess. Uh-uh. Not guessing. You don't want to be in the situation where you're getting baby butt hinges. <laughs> right? you got to have nobody the right size. Nobody a baby butt hinge. No, nobody, nobody got time for that. <laughs> we ought to send them back. So that's it for today. Until next time, remember, keep, keep your, your biscuits, biscuits dry. dry.